Hello and welcome to chapter 38 of this Flutter course. In previous chapters, we've been talking quite a bit about how we sync our notes with our <clears throat> Firestore database and how we can read those notes back and update them. It'd be really fun also to be able to share our notes and that's exactly what we're gonna take care of in this chapter. In order to do that, we need to use a plugin called SharePlus. And SharePlus is a plugin, a plugin as I've um, <clears throat> mentioned now. So it is not a package where a package extends the existing capabilities of Flutter into new heights. A plugin takes a completely new route and <clears throat> basically uh, goes well beyond beyond what Flutter internally can deliver. And a packet, a plugin will need to be developed by, <clears throat> excuse me, a developer or a set of developers. And it needs to be written specifically for various platforms that that plugin wants to support, for instance, iOS, Android. So a developer has to go and write some code for iOS, for Android, web, et cetera, et cetera, in order for that plugin to work on those platforms. Now here we're going to use the Share Plus plugin, and the Share Plus plugin is developed by the Flutter community. So what we're going to have a look at here is to go into uh, Pub Dev. So I'm going to do that right now. <clears throat> Excuse me for my throat. And in Pub Dev, we're going to search for uh, Share Plus. After you've done that, you'll see that you'll end up here and it is by a verified developer called fluttercommunity.dev. So you can tap on that and you can get some more information about the developer here. <clears throat> and you can see that it supports Android, iOS, Linux, Mac, OS, web, and Windows. So what more could you ask for? Um, so it's a free package that you can use in your application and you can see that all you need to do is just to, let's go to inst installing. And you see, you have to say Flutter, pop, at share plus. And that's exactly what we're going to do now in our application. So I'm going to bring our app here. And let's go ahead, <clears throat> excuse me again, in our terminal. And I'm going to rearrange things a little bit here. OK. Actually, perhaps I could do the same thing that we've done before. So let me increase the size of this terminal so you see it better. So let's just do the same thing that was mentioned in the documentation. So flutter pub add share plus. So flutter pub add share plus. <clears throat> and this share plus, since it's it's a whole new uh, plugin that you're adding to your application, it's very important that you basically rebuild your application because otherwise it won't be available. All right. So what you could do is to do a clean and then rebuild. This is cleaning is especially important for iOS because sometimes when you add a new pl plugin, um, since Flutter uses CocoaPods in order to handle iOS uh, dependencies, then your build may not actually be able to pick up on that new dependency. So it is important to do a clean. But for Android, it's usually not a problem. So I'm just going <clears> to... <throat> Excuse me, I'm just going to uh, rebuild the application and see if everything is working as expected. So I'm going to stop the application here. And I'm just going to make sure that Flutter Select Device is using my Android telephone. And then I'm going to go to main Dart and just say run, run without debugging. <clears throat> and it's, it says we have some errors. So let's see if we can fix those errors in here. Okay, share plus plugin. As I can as I can see, we already have the problem now in our application. So <laughs> maybe that's why we have to do a clean. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go to terminal and I'm gonna say um, flutter clean. Okay, that's gonna clean the Xcode workspace and hopefully it's gonna clean the Android as well. So I'm just gonna say flutter clean Android. <clears throat> Do you mean any of these? Did I not write clean? I I wrote clear. So clean Android. Oh, it's doing the same thing. OK. So then I'm going to do Flutter. Uh, and let's just say pop get. So that's going to rebuild our, all our dependencies. So there we go. Now that those errors have disappeared. OK, so you may have to do have Flutter clean. Uh, I was trying to get away without using that, but I was forced to eventually. So in main Dart, I'm just going to say run without debugging. And that's just going to take its time and go to SCRCPY. Uh, I'm just going to bring SCRCPY to the screen as well soon. 
I'll just make sure that I have Wi-Fi access on this phone because I play quite a lot with Wi-Fi and hotspots on this Android phone. So it could be that sometimes I don't actually have Wi-Fi. <clears throat> okay, so that seems to be running. And here is uh, that Android phone. Uh, and I can see that the Flutter application is trying to run great to run this on that phone. So we've done that. We've done the clean and rebuild. So that's great. And <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to take care of is to disallow sharing MT notes. You see, if, if you're on a, on a notes screen and you haven't even, for instance, written anything in your note, you shouldn't be able to share that note with anybody because, well, it's just empty text in there. So let's go ahead and we need to take care of that scenario by having a dialogue. And we're going to create this dialogue inside this folder. <clears throat> Excuse me again. I've been talking quite a lot today, and that's why my throat is giving me some trouble. So let's go to lib utilities under dialogues. We're going to create this cannot share empty note dialogue. Okay. Uh, let me change the screen layout a little bit here. And views we have there, and we have services. So let's see what we have constancy nodes, extension services, utilities, and views. But we don't have. So yeah, we have utilities and we have dialogue. So we have to create a new one. Let's just say new file. And I'm going to say cannot share empty note dialogue, the dart. And you will remember from before that we already have a, um, a generic dialogue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say future of void. So the function signature is going to look like this as I'm showing you at the bottom of the screen. So let's say show cannot share empty notes dialogue. It's quite a long name. And then it return it requires a build context. So build context, context like this. Okay, then what we're going to do in this function is to return uh, our generic dialogue. And this is something that I'm actually quite proud of that we could create. And we are using it so many times now. It's unbelievable. So we literally have one dialogue implementation in the, in the entire application. And we're just reusing it. And it's truly generic. And it's really good. So let's in here, let's say that we return our generic, show generic dialog. And it's going to auto import that for me. It's inside utilities, dialogs, generic dialog. So you may have to import that yourself if your uh, editor doesn't allow you to auto import. So the context is already there. For the title, we're just going to say sharing. For the content, I'm going to say you cannot share an empty note. Okay. And it's options builder, remember, it's a function that should return um, a map. And in the map, we're just going to say it has one button that has literally no value. So this is going to make it a, a, a dialogue that returns void or future of void when we call it here. OK, so that file is now created. <clears throat> Now, what we're going to do is to go and add that button. As you can see, it says in create update note view, add an icon button to actions of app bar. So I'm going to go to my notes as well, uh, create update. And let's go ahead and just add that button. Uh, there we go. I can see that we're using a share icon. So I'm going to decrease the size of, this, of the font. It's, it's very big at the moment. Uh, one more step. I, I, I think you can still see the way it is. I mean, I can see in the video, output video, it should be visible still, even though I've decreased the size. So let me go here, bring SCRCPY. I'm going to close this <clears throat> Safari window. Let's go to create update note view. And we already have this button at the, at the top, I believe. Let's see. Do we have any buttons at the top? No, we actually don't. So... In our app bar, so let's go and create something called actions in here. And you can see it's a list of widgets. And in here, we're just going to say icon button. On press, we're just going to leave it empty. And for its icon, we're just going to say const icon. Um, and we're going to use icons share. <clears throat> Remove this parenthesis from there. And then put like that. OK, so now, now that we have this icon I can uh, button there. If I press on uh, any of these existing notes, then we should be able to see a little share button up here. At the moment, it doesn't do anything because it's on press is empty, but we're going to program that program that right now. 
So let's grab the current text of our current node. So let's just say that this is equal to our text controller's text. And we're going to say if note is not null and the text, um, actually, let's just check for null. And the text, <clears throat> or actually, or this text is empty, then we're going to display our new uh, dialog that we just implemented. So let's just say we await on show cannot, what was that function called? Show cannot, uh, we did it inside the cannot share empty note. So I'm just going to copy its name and go in here and paste it. And uh, now I'm going to use Visual Studio Code to do the auto importing for me. So uh, it needs a build context. And in here, I'm just going to pass the context. And you can see it's complaining that I'm using a wait inside an unpress function that isn't async. So I'm just going to make this function async, OK? Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to use share. And share, it is it's coming from share plus, and it can be auto imported, OK? So I'm going to just auto import that. And in here, I'm just going to say share that text. It's really just as simple as that. So. Let's go in here, and I'm going to create a new note. You can see it has no text. I'm going to press the share button, and now we see, now we're seeing our beautiful little dialog that says you cannot share an empty note. Fantastic. And if I go out, that note is deleted. But then if I go to a note that does have text, for instance, van.second second note or van dot first note, and in here I'm going to go to van dot first note. And then if I press the share button, then I'm going to be presented with. In this case, Android's default share uh, sheet or how you want to call it. And on iOS, you're going to be presented with the default iOS sharing activity. So this is pretty much it. So we didn't have to do much more than this. It's literally the call is share.share. .share. So you can see it's so simple when you drag in a plugin, especially a plugin that is from a verified developer, especially from Flutter community or Flutter team or dark dev team themselves. All right, perfect. So that was for sharing. There's not much more to sharing than that. And uh, we don't have to drag on, on uh, this uh, chapter. So let's go ahead, as is tradition, we're going to go and uh, commit our work. So I'm going to do some shuffling around here. Going to get rid of SCRCPY, increase the size of the screen and the font so you see better. Then let's go to our terminal. And I'm going to have a look at our Git log. The previous uh, chapter, we committed at step 20. And we also tagged as a step 20. Let's just do step 21 in this case. So Git status, we have quite a lot of new stuff. So if I say Git status in here, you can see a new file in here as well. So let's commit as step 21 and push our commit. And I'm going to go and tag it and say step 21 as well. And then we push our tags as well. OK, perfect. So that's it. So if you say git status right now, we shouldn't have any uncommitted files. Very well done. So um, what we're going to do in the next chapter is very, very exciting. We're going to delve into a uh, block. And if you're a a Flutter developer from before, you'll know what block is maybe, or maybe you've heard of it and you want to learn about it so that next chapter is perfect for you. If you're not a Flutter developer from before, you may not know what block is, and I'll explain it more. However, I'll just, at the end of the chapter, I'm not going to go into the details of the next chapter, but what we have to talk about is how, at the moment, our UI which is our different views, are actually working directly with our services. So we have some services that, for instance, can store stuff in the um, in Firestore database. And we also have some services that are like, for our authentication, the UI is, upon pressing the login button, we're going to the auth service, and the auth service is coming back with results directly to our UI. This is working. It's fine. However, there's a better way of doing this, and that's through separating the logic of our UI from our business logic, ensuring that our UI is doing what it's best, what it knows best, and that's drawing things on the screen. But when it comes to handling logic and like making API calls and etc., the UI shouldn't really know much about that. The UI should just 
convey its purpose to some sort of a layer that we're going to create in our application with the block library. And that that layer will decide, okay, upon this button being pressed, I actually have to do this business logic. So I'm very excited actually about the next chapter. So uh, grab some refreshments if you want to, and I'll see you there.